Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Man the Maker, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play for Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri Alien Crossfire. This is uh, a pretty old game, 1999, yeah, almost, almost 20 years old, that's kind of crazy. And in my view, one of the best 4X games um, ever created. Um, it's in the same vein, uh, the same creators as well as uh, the Civilization series where, you know, you build cities, you build improvements in those cities, military units, you expand, you exploit, uh, you know the drill, um, you do research, you manage your economy, all that kind of thing. Um, but I just, the way that it's put together is just unparalleled uh, as far as I can think. Um, the atmosphere of the game like the story it actually has kind of a, a cohesive background story and the world building uh, the writing in the game is just amazing um and uh yeah i thought to myself you know i was thinking about what else, what next to play and this came to mind it's been a long time since i've actually played it um and i've actually only played with the expansion alien crossfire uh, which i am playing with now only once before so that's going to be, you know, a little bit of new and exciting things for me because I don't really remember what uh, so much of what that adds. Um, yeah, so um, we're going to we're going to give a run through on it. We're just going to go ahead and start the game. I'm going to do a map of planet just because I, I like the map of the planet. Um, I'm going to do thinker. Uh, this is probably a higher difficulty than I've ever played before. But uh, these days, I'm I'm much more uh, content to die. <laughs> I guess I've come, I've made peace with myself, you know. So um, I don't mind if I get my ass kicked. That wouldn't be the worst thing. It would be it could be a learning experience. So I'm gonna I'm gonna set it on thinker. We are going to play I think with standard rules. Um, I often like to turn off the uh don't restart eliminated players and i think i'm going to do that um this uh this the game rules let you you know pick how you want to allow victory um there are a number of ways and frankly i don't remember how to do the economic victory for example um the diplomatic victory you do through the un equivalent uh there's like a planetary governance system uh transcendence is science victory conquest is as it says, um, you can pick where you start. You can slow research down. You can steal tech when conquering base. Blind research is a thing that I always really liked. I'm going to play with it on. It just you cannot set precise research goals. You pick one of the four research categories, um, and then uh, you know you just get one of those categories. We'll get more into that in the game itself. Um, Intense rivalry, you can make opponents more aggressive, you can have the world map be invisible. Um, the rest of this stuff I'm not even worried about. I, I would play on Iron Man, but sometimes I get issues with recording and I'd like to be able to uh, have one game that I can go back and uh, replay things if I you know, lose 20 minutes of recording or something for whatever reason. Um, you can also randomize the personalities and social agendas um, of the opponents, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave them on, so let's just go ahead. Here we can pick our faction. So you've got the base game factions. We've got um, um, the Gaia's stepdaughters, or the green faction, Human Hive, the Despot, University of Planet, the Scientist, Morgan Industries, the Mogul, Spartan Federation, the Survivalist, the Lords, Believers, the Fundamentalist, and Peacekeeping Forces, the Humanitarian. So what is the story of this game? Um, essentially, when you beat Civilization, um, one of the options is the tech victory. You send a spaceship off to Alpha Centauri. And when that spaceship arrives here, something happens um, and everybody splits up into different factions and goes off on their own way, settling in different areas. Um, with the coming of the expansion, um, two alien factions have also shown up and they are antagonistic with each other. They actually get into a fight over the uh, over the planet. They blow each other's ships up, and then they have escape pods come and land down. So there's also alien factions, which are available with the expansion, which you can see here. Um, cybernetic consciousness, 
the algorithm, Nautilus Pirates, the Buccaneer, the Free Drones, the Laborer, the Data Angels, the Info Girl. Yeah, that's rather unfortunate. Um, the Cult of Planet, the Voice, Manifold Caretakers, and Manifold Usurpers. These are the aliens, the Conservatory, and the Insurgent. Um, and so one more aspect of the game is that the planet itself has uh, some alien life on it already. There's fungus everywhere um, and out of this fungus is some native animal uh, native life very animalistic but um, as you start butting up against the environment they uh, can become aggressive to you and things 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 can happen and uh, last is is random um, I think I'm going to play with the old factions only um, as I said, I'm not very experienced with the new factions, and I'm kind of coming back into this game after a long time uh, on a higher difficulty than I've ever played. So I, pro I, I, I don't think I want to start with uh, these unfamiliar factions. We're going to go classic. We're going to go classic. Um, I'm probably at some point going to do another uh, playthrough of this, and maybe when, when that comes around, I'll do... The new factions or maybe just all random um one thing i do know about this is apparently the nautilus pirates who start in the sea as you can have uh sea cities you can colonize in the ocean um they are overpowered i just remember hearing that so yeah we are going to play as who i think i'm gonna go with the human hive the despot le uh, led by chairman shenji yang they're uh they're kind of I guess you could an an extension of some kind of Chinese communism, uh, modern day Chinese communism, very collective in their ideology. Um, and I'll I'll let uh, Chairman Chen Jiang take over for me. Learn to overcome the crass demands of flesh and bone, for they warp the matrix through which we perceive the world. Extend your awareness outward beyond the self of body, to embrace the self of group and the self of humanity. The goals of the group and the greater race are transcendent, and to embrace them is to achieve enlightenment. Chairman Shen Jiang, SS on Mind and Matter. And there you have it. That is our kind of starting, uh, our, our philosophy, and uh, we'll look into how that affects the game itself at the very beginning. Um, quick question for you guys. So there's a lot of uh, voiceovers. Um, when you get texts, when you build a building the first time, and I think when you um, build wonders or, or special projects. Um, and I'd like to put it out there. Do you guys want me to skip them? Uh, as it does take a bit of time to let them speak over it or let them talk. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna default to letting them talk for now. Um, I may change my mind at any point on a whim, back and forth. But uh, yeah, if you got a if you got an opinion, leave it in the comments, and I'll I'll take that under advisement. So we are going to stick with Yang. I'm just going to keep the name. Um, so let's go ahead and land. Yang, a new era of struggle and an opportunity awaits you. The UN Starship Unity has arrived in the Alpha Centauri system after a 40-year voyage. All contact with Earth has been lost. After Captain Garland's assassination by an unknown assailant, the crew mutinied and split into factions. In the ensuing conflict, some seized control of the Unity's colony pods. You now shape the destiny of your Hive faction, which has just made planet fall. <clears throat> yep. So let's go ahead. And here we are. Whoa, whoa. Okay, calm down. Calm down, everyone. Um, yeah, so here's the game. We start with uh, no units, apparently. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, no, we do have units. Okay. Um, we've got two units that we start out. Here's our here's our little base. Let me, let me slow myself down here. So here's our little base. We start with one city. Um, you start with it already established. We don't know the nature of the world around us. Um, and uh, our task is to explore this new planet and develop our faction. And uh, we're going to come into contact with other people and see what's going on. First thing I need to do, um, I do want to 
change some options. Yeah, you still have pause at end of turn. Very good. And actually, I think that was it. Uh, advanced. I'm looking for automation preferences. Is that right? Warning preferences, advanced preferences. Um, okay, I guess I'm looking for there's the option to, to pick the tech and sometimes it does it automatically for you in the beginning, choosing which path you want to research. But I do not see that. Network, HQ, set research priorities. So here um, is where we choose our priorities. As I said, we don't actually get to pick them ourselves. Um, we get to choose between these four categories. Now we can pick all four and it will just pick randomly. We can pick just one and it'll go up that specific tree. Um, and the categories are explore, colonization and population growth, discover, advance of pure knowledge, build wealth and infrastructure, and conquer direct military applications. So the question is, where do you start? I mean, conquer is definitely, I think, a no-no for me. Um, not going to start right off with that. We're going we're gonna to work on our infrastructure a little bit in the beginning before we start trying to direct ourselves into conquer. Um, discover is good for just so many reasons, but in this game, colonization is incredibly important. Building uh, colony pods and expanding quickly that way is just incredibly, incredibly important. And to that end, you know, you're not going to be building all that much other um, other uh, buildings and units in your bases. Um, you're just going to pretty much focus on exploration and colonization. Um, and you don't really need any of the techs for that. And uh, as I don't really recall um, how the tree starts out, as well as, frankly, I mean, they added new stuff with the expansion. I don't know that. I think I'm going to go for Discover. I'm going to aim for Secrets of the Human Mind? Secrets of the Human Brain, I think? Which, if you get it first, which is very unlikely for us, as we are playing against a strong computer, um, if you get it first, you get a nice big bonus. Um, the only reason I'm thinking it's possible is if we... Uh, if we get it randomly, because everyone else is also um, doing this. So, you know, they can choose Discover, and maybe they, they don't get Secrets of the Human Brain first, unless that is just the only first available option. Um, so, you know what? Forget that. I'm going to go for all three of these. I'm going to let it kind of decide. We're, we're interested in all this stuff to start out with. So, I'm going to set it for all of them. I would like to activate. There's got to be a better way. Activate units here. So we've got a colony pod. This is how you build new cities. Oops. And this, we've got a scout patrol. He's only green, so he's got low morale because morale is a, a system in this game. And uh, I think we're just going to go ahead. We're going to start exploring. And I want to hold my colony pod here Come for here. now. Now, what are we doing? This is our city. We've got base resources, minerals, nutrients, and energy. Uh, nutrients, minerals, and energy. Um, nutrients is how you grow. Minerals is how you build. And energy, you convert into uh, money and research, as well as later on other things. But for now, that's all we're going to worry about. We've got psych here, which is psychology, basically used to make your people happier, which can be powerful later on. But for now, it's totally unnecessary. Um, over here, we've got our buildings, our headquarters, and our perimeter defense. This is basically walls. Makes it harder for us to attack. And um, yeah, you can move around where you're working. Uh, this is obviously the best choice, 111. And uh, it's, it's pretty complicated how it decides what um, resource yields you get from each tile. It's got to do with the elevation for energy. It's got to do with the um, fertility, or I, 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 there's a different name for it. Uh, fertility of the area for the food for the rockiness of the area for the industry putting a river down helps putting roads down help you can build all sorts of improvements later on which we will get to 
Um, but for now, nothing much to do. You can see we grow in 21 turns. We're making two minerals and getting four energy per turn. So production, we can start with a scout patrol, colony pod. We can just stockpile energy, turning our minerals into energy. Or we can go for a world wonder or a special project, which gives you a command center in each base. Um, and uh, that effectively makes all troops that you produce from any base that has a command center has a bonus to morale. And morale is just a, a flat bonus percentage to combat. Very, very good, particularly against uh, psionic units, which we, uh, we, we will get to that pretty soon, I'm sure. Um, I think we have this because of our faction that we start with uh, whatever technology Command Nexus requires. I have a sip of water. Um, we're not going to do that, though. We're just going to start with the start, uh, Scout Patrol um, because exploration is good. You know, we've got these little things here. Unity pods. They're kind of like uh, goodie huts. They give you some random bonus from some some list. Sometimes you get um, research related things. Sometimes you get money. Sometimes bad things can happen. You can get um, a trigger an earthquake. All kinds of different things. Most of which I don't remember. Um, and uh, I think there's one more thing we're going to take a look at. And that is our social engineering. So one of the ways this game emulates um, social engineering and how to guide your society is this screen right here. And you've got four different co uh, categories, politics, economics, values, and future society. For each of them, there are three different possible choices. And they all affect the society uh, stats over here. Economy, efficiency, support, morale, police, growth, planet, probe, industry, and research. Um, because of who we are, we are the hive, we start automatically with minus two economy. That means every base just gets minus one energy, just straight up. Plus one growth, 10% growth rate. And plus one energy, uh, sorry, industry, mineral cost decreased by 10%. Basically, everything is 10% cheaper to build. Um, each faction has different starting bonuses as well as, I believe, different techs um, that give you different, um, I forget, uh, social engineering, uh, different social engineering states. So us being the hive, we start with police state. So this gives plus two support, plus two police, minus two efficiency. And we can go ahead and look at choosing this. What does it do? Um, why does it not give minus two to efficiency? That's very bizarre. I am not entirely sure about that. But if we went to police state, we would get plus two support. So we would go from support two units free for base or support four units free for base. So this is basically like if I go over four units produced from one city, they will start to have a mineral cost attached to them. So it can get very expensive if you have low support and some places get very low support, can't support any free units and then you're starting to pay um, minerals for terraformers, for military units, all kinds of things. And you can really like hurt your, uh, your production that way. Um, police also gives can use up to three military units as police. This is essentially um, your people will get unhappy as the game goes on. As as um, cities get bigger, you just get unhappy citizens. This allows you to use military to offset that. Now I don't know why it's not giving me the minus two efficiency here. Um, efficiency basically. As you get bigger, you start to lose energy income through waste. So zero is an, a null, you know. But as that gets higher, this should be negative two, um, which uh, would give us more efficiency. We would be hurting our energy income, basically. Um, so economy just gives base flat out energy and efficiency is a scaling kind of efficiency uh and will will hurt into your energy income which is research and money and happiness quite a bit 
it doesn't matter for now. I mean, I going for this now apparently doesn't give us any negative. I'm, I'm not entirely sure why that is. Um, but we're not going to do it anyways because we actually don't need to just support four units free for base. Nor do we need to use any military units as police. It would cost money. Um, and, you know, it has no downside. So... I'm tempted to just go for it. Apparently, it's not giving me minus two efficiency. I'm not sure why that is. But we're going to go ahead. We pay a little bit of money for it. But I'm going to say, yeah, you know what? Go for it. Energy. Oh, we don't have enough money. Okay, so we're not going to do that. But this, you're going to unlock a lot more of these as goes as it goes on. I mean, there's, there's nine that you'll get throughout the game. And then the Future Society stuff happens much later. And is very, very powerful. It can be very powerful. But for now, we will leave that as is. Um, no, nothing that we really can do to affect this, so we won't worry about it. And uh, we're going to go ahead and end our first turn. Um, okay. This th they think it's my first time playing El Centauri because I had to install the game uh, a few times to get it to work properly and to get uh, the widescreen as well here. Um, it's being a bit difficult to get it to work on my Mac. Um, so we will just wait with that. We're going to send our scout New guy over resources. here. We have recovered a supply pod from the Unity. Contains a Unity rover in working condition. Wonderful. So we've picked up a unit. Um, this is one of the, uh, I think, three ground chassis that you can get. Um, or maybe just one of the two ground chassis. Basically... Um, and we'll, we'll get into unit creation later on because it's it's very, very in-depth and uh, you can do a lot of things. But basically, this guy, he's got two movement and the normal uh, infantrymen have one. So this is really nice to have to start out our uh, exploration. We can really turn boost complete. things out. So we're going to go ahead and move him and then end our Production turn. Complete. Um, going to look now for a nice place to put our city. And we're going to want to do it pretty soon. <clears throat> But I will wait a little bit more. Let's uh, continue our exploration. Turn complete. Did you not move? Yes. So what we have here, this uh, red stuff, which I have not actually commented on yet, this is xenofungus. So this is uh, basically an alien life form that just covers this planet in vast swaths. And it can expand and we can destroy it. And... Uh, there are positives and negatives to it. Um, one of the things you can do, if you go into a planet, if you get your planet up really high, um, as well as certain technologies later on, uh, fungus can become a very powerful tile. Um, and well, you can also interact with some of the things that happen with it. But we won't get ahead of ourselves. Just know it kills movement and uh, there can be things hiding inside of it. Uh, everybody already moved. I really want to get... Um, oh, don't... Don't end the turn. Um, I should have changed this already. Now, I'm tempted... What's our what's our population at? We're still only at one, so we, we can't actually um, build a colony pod yet because I believe it takes away one of your populations. So we'll get another scout patrol. I'm on a high difficulty. we got to be careful here. Pods are covered. We have discovered a materials pod from the Unity and has provided sufficient minerals for us to finish building the scout patrol at the hive next turn. Well, that's that's a lot of scout patrols. Um, and you know, I'm actually tempted to go for the food right now because we don't need. I'm not really crazy about building another uh, scout patrol. And what I really want to do is grow. So. I'm going to go ahead and start moving this out. And we're going to go ahead and see if we can uh, go and build something. A robot power pod has set up silver collectors in this area. Turn complete. All right. There's our turn. Production complete. And uh, let's go swoop around this way. Um, so where do we want to build our city? Being, okay, so this thing here, this thing here is called the monument. We can go ahead. Oh, you've already moved, have you? 
don't show again, please. I, you know, I need to turn these these tips off. I'm sure there's a way to do that. Tutorial messages done. Um, this thing is some relic that's here before, and it actually gives really really good bonuses for your city if you work it. Um, so we, we, you know, building a city near one of those is really nice. Building a city near food or minerals gives a, a bonus to those tiles when worked. So definitely something to look into. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and move move him out as well. Okay. You're out of movement. Now, do we need another scout patrol? Eight turns and we're gonna grow in five. I'm gonna say yes. I, I want to get as many explorers out and we also need to defend our base um, quite a bit because there are threats that can crop up early on in the game. Uh, yeah, we want you guys to uh, focus on cover? everything. Activating the pod triggers a xenal fungal bloom. So activating that pod made uh, a whole bunch of fungus just pop out. Now in the beginning you can't build cities on them. They're terrible for resources. I think they give one food. So not very useful for us. Uh, we have found a mysterious uh, monolith with this guy over here. You can leave it alone. We can investigate. We can always investigate monoliths. As I know what it does, I will just investigate it. Uh, the arcane technology of the monolith enhance our unit to disciplined status. So he's now disciplined um, instead of green, I think it is. And like I said before, the, the morale gives you a bonus in all combats, but it's particularly useful in some certain situations. So we've got two pods over here. Let's go. No. Now, I think I'm going to move you up to here and build the city there. So now you can see we've got this cross here, right? It's two out, two out, two out um, in a little grid. So from here, there would be overlap, right? But the number of cities in this game I think is more important than having this kind of per perfect spread. And so I think I'm just going to go ahead and get our second city up immediately. We're on a river, which does give bonuses. We've got this tile there. We can swap the food around if we want one city to grow in particular. So I'm going to go ahead and build up Labor Network. We found mankind's first base since landfall, Labor Network. So the first time anything is done, you get this delightful music and uh, a little pop-up. So we're actually the first to build the city, which I'm a bit surprised by. So, oops. Just classic song right here. It was a big hit in uh, 99 on my local radio station. Uh, all the kids were just going crazy for it. So we built this. We are... We'll finish the Scout Patrol very, very quickly. Um, which I'm actually fine with. Now, we got that because you start with uh, some minerals when you start a city. Also, apparently, and I, I really... Uh, <laughs> it's been a long time since I played it. Apparently, the Hive starts with perimeter defenses in all of their cities, which is a nice free walls. It's actually quite good. Um, we are going to have something pop here very soon. Uh, next turn, they'll have some defenses. So we're just going to keep on exploring out. I have Provost Zakharov of the University on Channel 1. Shall I put him through? We've met our first uh, opponent, or other faction, I should say. They're not quite opponents just yet. Yes, switch to the main view screen. Chairman Yang, I presume. Uh, all right, let's, let's try and get into character here. Chairman Yang, I presume. Provost Zakharov of the University. Yeah, can't do that. <laughs> Accent at your service. I'm told you have built yourself a mighty empire here on this rocky planet. Be aware that I plan to pursue pure research, unfettered by outside motives and meddling, and I will brook no interference in this matter. Uh, this is not any particular accent that I'm going for. It's some kind of amalgamation of my ignorance, and uh, but it's fun, so I'm going to go for it. Through cooperation, we can achieve mutual satisfaction of needs. 
Will you transmit your files on doctrine loyalty in exchange for my information on information networks? Think how your social experiments could be enhanced by proper use of such technology. Um, so what we can see here, he wants a trade text for us. What he wants is C2, which I think is build or conquer. Yes, that's conquer. So this is a second level tech in the conquer tree. And he wants to give us information networks, which is a um, the knowledge tech rank one. Not very good deal for me. Um, that being said, we will still take it. Ugh, not very good. We're not going to take it. Um, he wants us to give us that tech for free. Um, maybe if he pays us money. Sorry. Uh, well, <sighs> I should have taken the trade probably. He is unsurpassed. And we don't want to piss him off. I'm not going to do it. Splendid. My research and your social experiments complement one another nicely. The university and the hive have much to gain from this friendship. We shall commence trade and commerce at once. Um, I have a proposal to make. What, do, uh, did, will you trade me your, your tech? Uh, some of my valuable research data, perhaps? Same thing. I'll do it. The righteous need not cower before the drumbeat of human progress. Though the song of yesterday fades into the challenge of tomorrow, God still watches and judges us. Evil lurks in the data links as it lurked in the streets of yesteryear. But it was never the streets that were evil. Sister Miriam Godwinson, The Blessed Struggle. Ah, so we've got uh, our technology, our information networks, with a little quote from Sister Miriam Godwinson, the leader of uh, the Believers, I think they are. They're the fundamentalists. She's crazy. She cray cray. Uh, she's very scary to start with because the fundamentalists are super good at fighting, um, but not particularly smart. So if you meet them early on, they can do some real damage to you. Um, and what this gave us was a network node. You know, and see what it does. Increases labs at base by 50%. End base can study alien artifacts. So that's quite good. Um, of course, it's it's basically your, your libraries mixed with a little uh, bonus if you can pick up an alien artifact, which we have not. But uh, yeah, um, I think we're all done with here. I have another proposal to make. Do, do you want to be friends? You would need to name your price, Provost. Okay, so no friends. We, we want to become friends. We want to make packs with him. His might is unsurpassed, as you can see over here. Um, this is... I love this. It's got him as a Ute. Uh, look at a little boy, a little Provost there, Mr. Zakharov. Um, so he's much stronger than us. And we want, to, we want to be friends with him until we can start gaining an advantage. Uh, war could be a possible eventuality, but for now we're going to try and go peace and just expand as much as we can. So I believe we are finished here. Excellent. I'm going to continue exploring. Turn complete. Uh, cancel orders. You've already moved. And I believe that's our turn. Production complete. This is actually quite nice. You see, the uh, the monoliths give two of each uh, resource, which is fantastic. That's just wonderful. Um, we're definitely going to switch that over to that. Um, I am going to build another scout patrol here because, you know, we, we want to make sure that we are reasonably defended. We don't know what's out there, except for Provost Zakharov, and we know that he's, he's stronger than we are. Um, and uh, that's it for this first episode. If you like this series, you know, I'd always appreciate a like. Um, if you like me, you know, say hi sometimes. Drop a comment. Subscribe to the channel. Um, if you've got tips, suggestions, complaints, all that good stuff, leave it down in the comments below. Always appreciate it of that. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this first episode. I'm really looking forward to continuing this series, uh, playing this game. It's one of my favorite from when I was a when I was a younger boy in simpler times, 
And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the episode. Again, I will say that. My name is Man the Maker. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful day.